is Leon in the Spitting Image, chapter two, entitled, Try More Towers. A dog barked from somewhere upstairs. Leon glanced out the window. The lights on the convention center sign snapped off. It was late. He tucked the three sheets of paper back into the envelope and tucked himself back into bed. Some home report, he thought, as he built a tent with his blankets. I could have done a better job myself. That was certainly true. And what's more, if Leon had written his own home report, he would have stuck to the assignment. There would have been no mention of macaroni necklaces, that's for sure. He would have focused his home report on his home, Trimore Towers, a wedding cake-shaped six-tiered hotel his mother called the finest one-star lodgings in the city. For a long time, Leon had assumed that a single gold star on the plaque near the key rack meant his hotel was tops. After all, he received a single gold star from Miss Brunelici only when he managed to make his flute do exactly what it was supposed to do, and that didn't happen too often. Then his mom set him straight about the whole star system. Adults like getting lots of stars, sweetie, she said. They're greedy that way. Leon didn't care what grown-ups thought. He loved his hotel just as it was. Actually, the lack of stars was a good thing, Leon decided. Because the Trimore wasn't snazzy, it attracted guests that snootier hotels turned away. Elegant five-star establishments would never give a room to a seal act or a snake handler. The Trimore did. In fact, it was the only hotel in the city that had an all pets welcome sign posted above the reception desk. On some days, the Trimore lobby resembled a petting zoo. That didn't make Maria, Leon's favorite housekeeper, terribly happy, but over time she had learned to take precautions. Along with her normal cleaning supplies, Maria relied on a highly effective product called Poop Be Gone. Also, she kept the reception desk stocked with diapers in all different sizes. You never knew when a chimp or a llama might check in wearing a soiled nappy, or worse, no nappy at all. Obviously, animals weren't the only guests staying at the Trimore. The hotel also booked humans, most of whom attended meetings at the convention center across the street. If you can, you can click to the next slide. Leon liked that too. The convention center attracted all kinds of intriguing people, detectives, stuntmen, contortionists, potato chip tasters, and the best part was they often left behind stuff that couldn't fit into their suitcases. That's where Maria came in. If she found an interesting freebie while cleaning a room, she'd save it for Leon. She presented him with blinking refrigerator magnets, pen lights, a juggling pin, and a policeman's badge. Once, Maria gave him a bag of potato chips the size of a pillowcase. There were other matters Leon would have mentioned in his home report. For instance, how many places actually pay you to live there? And it wasn't just his mom, the Trimore night manager, who got that deal. Leon was on the payroll, too. Every week, the hotel bookkeeper would make out a check to Mr. L. Zeisel for the sum of $3. It was Leon's job to maintain the lobby signboard, and that meant fetching the daily VIP guest list from his mom, along with an old wooden letterbox that had a sturdy brass latch shaped like a question mark. The box was divided into 64 compartments, ideal for separating the 26 letters of the alphabet, upper and lowercase, plus all the numbers from zero through nine. Actually, 
that only adds up to 62. But the weird thingamabobs, the ampersands and the dollar signs and the pound signs were very useful. And the very useful exclamation marks filled the two spare cubbies. Leon would use letters, numbers, and thingamabobs to reproduce the VIP list on a signboard covered in black felt. Leon's penmanship might have been significantly below grade level, but his signboard usually deserved an A+. The day before the start of fourth grade, Leon had positioned the white plastic letters to read, Welcome West Coast Mime Company, Howdy Colorado Cowpunchers. Leon loved exclamation marks. He felt they turned VIPs into V VIPs. Another benefit of exclamation marks was that they drew attention away from a major signboard problem, the missing Ws. No one at the hotel knew how it had happened, but all the Ws, both uppercase, excuse me, both upper and lowercase, had disappeared. This forced Leon to substitute side-by-side -side Vs. He experimented for a while with upside-down Ms, but they kept falling off the felt. After diligently straightening the letters and punctuation marks, Leon would latch the wooden box and inspect the work that earned him his weekly paycheck. Next page. Still, not everything about life at the Trimore was great. Actually, there were some things that were downright lousy. The Ice Queen, for instance. The Ice Queen was an ancient ice maker that occupied an alcove on the far side of his bedroom wall. The noise it made drove Leon bonkers. Leon hated the Ice Queen. Just thinking about her turned his blood to, well, ice. She reminded him of the fairy tale witch of the same name. In the storybooks, the Ice Queen cast an evil spell that forced the entire village to sleep for 100 years. But his Ice Queen, the one rattling in the hotel hallway, did the exact opposite. She prevented sleep. Her spell was always the same. It began with three harsh clicks, followed by a long, obnoxious buzz. Then she would tease her victims by falling silent. The silence could last one minute. It could last 10. Yet the Ice Queen always revived her hex, creating a bed-rattling hullabaloo as she spat ice cubes into a large metal bucket. Click, 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 buzz. Does anyone want to do an impression of what they think the Ice Queen would have sounded like? This ancient ice maker? It says click, 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 buzz. Kiki, go ahead. Yes, Isaac. Very nice. And the sound from the far side of the bedroom wall forced Leon deeper under his blanket. Grind, groan, rumble, crash. Leon reemerged from his dark, hot bunker and looked around the room. The ice maker's thunderous finale had been so intense, it had knocked loose some of the pushpin flags stuck into the map of the world above his bed. Leon squinched his eyes and clucked his tongue, hoping a counter hex would silence the ice queen. No such luck. Within seconds, she started up once more. Click, 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 buzz. Leon couldn't stand it. Still in his pajamas, he fled the hotel apartment and rode the elevator down to the lobby. He marched over to the reception desk. Mom, he moaned, she's doing it again. I'm sorry, sweetie, his mother said, knowing instantly who she was. I did make some calls, but that machine is so darn old, I can't find anyone to quiet her down. Leon ducked under the counter and planted himself near the key rack. She won't shut up, he complained. His mom nodded sympathetically. It's the mimes, Leon. They've been whooping it up ever since they arrived. Maria just told me they wiped out four mini bars and the candy dispenser. Funny, 
I'd have expected the cowpunchers to be the rowdy ones, but they've turned out to be quiet as church mice. Mom, can I? Leon hesitated. Emma's eyes looked at her son's pale, anxious face. The dark circles under his eyes worried her. Tell you what, she said. Go fetch me a sandwich and I'll fix you a bunk for down here. How does that sound? It's a deal, said Leon. He was already starting to feel better. You want the usual, Mom? I do, said Emma Zeisel before she had to turn away and help a cowpuncher change rooms because of a backed up toilet. Next page. The Trimores coffee shop, like the hotel that it housed, was a small operation. Four booths, six stools of counter service, and one very plump woman who kept the whole place running. Hey there, Frau Haffenreffer, said Leon to the woman in question. Still up, said Frau Haffenreffer with a look of concern. She knew he was starting school the next day. Can't sleep and mom needs a sandwich. The usual? Yep. Ordering, Frau Haffenreffer said to herself. One tongue on rye, extra hot, extra mustard. She then walked over to the sandwich station. While she prepared the food, Leon kept himself busy by inspecting the pastry in the glass, in the glass case near the cash register. There was a lot to inspect. Frau Haffenreffer took baking very seriously. And even with fingers as fat as Twinkies, she had absolutely no trouble whipping up elegant pastries, cookies, and cakes. So, Leon, she said, returning with the tongue sandwich neatly wrapped in wax paper, how should we top this off? I'll have a sugar-dusted chocolate chip cookie, and Mom will take one of those messy custardy things, Leon pointed to a pastry in the case, and a Napoleon for your mother, Frau Haffenreffer confirmed. Leon watched as she arranged the sandwich, cookie, and Napoleon inside a cardboard box. After determining that everything was neat and tidy, she closed the lid and yanked some red string from a spool chained above the counter. With a series of lightning fast motions worthy of a ninja warrior, Frau Haffenreffer tied up the box. She completed her attack with a single effortless slice that severed the string from the spool. For the longest time, Leon had wondered how she made that final cut look so easy. Eventually, he had figured out the trick. Frau Haffenreffer wore a special ring fitted with a tiny hooked blade that looked like the horn on a horn beetle. Leon took the food back to the office behind the reception desk. What do you think, sweetie, said his mom, taking a bite of her sandwich. Is the tongue tasting me while I'm tasting the tongue? <clears throat> Leon squelched a smile. Though he'd never admit it, he liked when his mom said goofy things. She pointed to a pair of battered leather armchairs she had pushed together to form a makeshift bed. Next page. As soon as you've finished your cookie, I want you to get some sleep. You have a big day tomorrow. Got it? Got it, said Leon. He curled up under a hotel blanket. It was scratchier than the one upstairs, but he didn't care. He was happy to be far away from the ice queen and the confidential home reports and happier still to be close to his mom. Leon woke feeling exhausted, and because of the home reports, sad. He looked for his mom only to discover that a hotel crisis involving a drunken mime had called her away from reception. After getting dressed in the school clothes thoughtfully laid out on top of a nearby filing cabinet, Leon made his way into the lobby where the signboard caught his eye. Hotel guests were forever rearranging the plastic letters, sending private messages to one another and spelling out nasty words. And sure enough, the sign no longer welcomed mimes and cowpunchers. It now said, best wishes to the Trimore's newest fourth grader. The announcement made Leon stop in his tracks. It didn't matter that his mom had used only capital letters and that she had messed up the spacing. And it didn't matter that she'd been chintzy with the exclamation marks. For just a moment, while he stared at the sign, Leon Zeisel felt a little better, ready to face 
fourth grade.